On a warm day, basking in the spring sun, you can find a queen bumblebee. She has been resting in her hiding space for several months, but spring has arrived, and now she is ready to start the bumblebee circle of life. Having been asleep for several months, the queen is starving, so her first task is to satisfy her voracious appetite. She does this by visiting early spring flowers, such as crocus, snowdrops, and willow, and she gorges on their nectar and pollen. Protein from the pollen fuels the growth of her ovaries, which she will need to lay her eggs. She now must look for somewhere to build a nest, which she does by zigzagging back and forth, scanning for an ideal location. This varies based on her species. Queens of the buff-tailed bumblebee prefer to build their nests underground. This is often in mouse holes, with bumblebee queens even being known to fight mice and chase them out of their homes. Carder bumblebees, however, can use their legs to manipulate soft matter, and therefore commonly nest above ground, building them in dense patches of grass or in compost heaps. Queens of the tree bumblebee like to build their nests in high up places, and therefore seek out tree holes or bird boxes. And no matter the species, for a spot to be up to standard, it must be protected from extremes of weather, have sufficient airflow, and be located near a supply of flowers. But whether in a compost heap, a mouse hole, or in a tree, once a queen finds a suitable location, she will begin to build her home. Unlike honeybees, who build symmetrical hives of hexagonal honeycomb, bumblebees are quite chaotic builders. The queen excretes wax to build pots, which she fills with supplies of nectar, and she also builds clusters of cells. In these cells, she lays a clump of eggs within a mound of pollen. Then, like a nesting bird, she will keep the developing eggs warm by vibrating her wing muscles. Even when nighttime temperatures drop to freezing, the queen can maintain the nest at 30 degrees Celsius by doing this. Her eggs develop into small larvae, and as the queen continues to feed them pollen, they grow bigger and bigger. The larvae eventually spin a cocoon before emerging as the first set of female worker bumblebees. The queen's daughters, who are around half her size, take over the building and guarding of the nest. From now on, the queen will stay in the nest, and her sole job is to lay eggs to produce more workers. The worker bumblebees take on the task of foraging, and throughout the year will visit a wide variety of flowers, collecting pollen and nectar. In doing so, they help pollinate many species of plants, including crops such as apples, beans, strawberries, and pumpkins. The bumblebees use the plants' pollen and nectar as energy to fuel the growth of their nest. Though unlike honeybees, whose hives can grow to tens of thousands strong, bumblebee nests tend to have only a few hundred workers. As midsummer arrives, the queen begins to lay eggs that develop into new queens and male drones. The male bees leave the nest first, followed by the newborn queens, and they will look to reproduce with bees from neighboring nests. Most male bumblebees are unsuccessful in reproducing, and both the successful and unsuccessful males die shortly after. In late summer, the new queens, who have successfully mated, will begin to feed heavily on flowers, building up stores of fat. Once this has been achieved, they search for a place to hide, and go into hibernation for several months. Though honeybee hives are able to live on for multiple years, the original queen bumblebee and her nest will naturally die off as autumn arrives. But her offspring, the new queens, live on, safe in hibernation, waiting for the next warm spring day, when they will start the bumblebee circle of life all over again. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to learn more about bumblebees and how we can protect them, visit the links in the video description.